Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to check this video out, man. Much appreciated. And um, today I'm out in the taco room here a little bit. I'm uh, sort of taking a break in between building these fish the moment lake map breakdowns and I'm working on tackle for the upcoming Bassmaster Open at Smith Lake and leaving for this weekend. Um, I'll keep you guys updated on that. I'm going to do some uh, practice videos covered in the tournament. I'll give you guys a complete update and keep you guys, uh, you know, updated as the week goes on down there. But anyway, I'm out in the tackle room getting a couple things prepared. And I, I want to do a second video uh, backing up what I did this morning. If you guys saw the video I did, did this morning on what I said was the best shaky heads, uh, if you missed that, I'll include the link in the description here. But I had several comments about people wanting to see my complete shaky head setup and that's what i'm going to do right now because i'm actually i'm building a setup here uh you know to have a shaky head ready for uh, smith lake hopefully i won't have to use it hopefully i can do a little bit more power fishing with all the flooded conditions down there but you never know when you're gonna need a backup or something like that so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to walk you guys through um everything I do as far as on my shaky head rigs, how I set them up, um, the equipment I use, A to Z on the whole thing. And once again, if you guys are interested in any of this stuff that I'm showing you here, um, you know, I'll include the Tackle Warehouse uh, Fish the Moment link in the description here. If you guys could order through that link, uh, Johnny and I get a portion of those uh, proceeds, which really helps out a lot. So anyway, let's get started here. I'll sort of show you the whole deal about how I rigged this up. and. This setup, um, like I said, I've used spin and tackle forever. Um, I've pretty much locked into this particular setup for my shaky heads. I just think it's the best system. And like any other technique that you have, shaky heads, flipping, cranking, whatever, it's all a system overall. It's a combination of the rod, the reel, the line, the bait you're using uh, to basically maximize the efficiency of that technique. So I'll sort of show you what, you, what I use here and why. First of all, um, let's talk about the rod a little bit. The rod I've got, this is a Mega Bass a Roshi Double X uh, Shaky Head Special, just like the tech, just made for the technique. And um, like I said, this rod right here, um, seven foot long. Um, I use the Whip Snake Roshi spinning rod for all my jerk baits and some of the small crank baits. But the Shaky Head Special, one of the things you want on a Shaky Head spinning rod is not only you want a seven foot length, but you also want a little bit faster tip on the thing. You need a fairly stiff butt on it, and you want a little bit faster tip because um, you actually have to set the hook to penetrate a fish's mouth through plastic. So that's when I'll you know go away from the whip snake rod, which is sort of the medium tip, to the more medium fast. So that's one of the things that I, I would recommend on there. The reel that I have on there, this is a Lose TLC 3000 spinning reel. Um, doesn't really matter. This is, I've, uh, you know, the equipment I used here are the ones, the companies that, and I work with all these companies and, and the reason I work with them is I like the product. So I, you know, it was a partnership based upon the fact I really like the product, but regardless, whatever uh, rod and reel you choose to use, here's some of the things to look for. And just like I said, with the rod, the TLC3, TLC 3000 spinning reel or whatever reel you use, it's important to have a large diameter spool because a large diameter spool on your spinning, I'm sort of running out of room here in my tackle room, a, a large diameter spool in your spinning outfit, it not only makes uh, you allow, it allows you to use a little bit heavier line up to 10 or 12 pound test line, but it also allows you to make longer casts. So you always want to use that 3000 series spool for the most part on your spinning um, outfit applications. The line that I use on this particular setup, um, I use the Seaguar and Vizex. Um, let me get, hold on one second. Oh, I had, had it over here. But anyway, I use the Seaguar and Vizex uh, eight pound test line. Um, like I said, you wanna use fluorocarbon all the time in your shaky head fishing. Line sizes on shaky heads for me, it's anywhere between six to 10 pound test line. Um, I'll use 10 pound test line if I can get away with it, like if I'm fishing a little bit more off colored water and I'm fishing those shaky heads that are like three sixteenths to a quarter of an ounce, I'll go to 10 pound test line. But I use straight fluorocarbon. And if you guys have followed my videos, you know that I'm not a fan of braided fluorocarbon. I don't use it, I use straight fluorocarbon all the time. And, um, you know, that's another video we can talk about, or you can go back and 
check my braid to fluorocarbon video out that I did, but I prefer straight fluorocarbon. One of the reasons, I'll just talk about it briefly here, why I prefer the straight fluorocarbon is that um, on shaky head fishing, most of the time or a lot of the time, I'm fishing it around uh, some type of rock cover, you know, whether it be chunk rock, bluffs, points, that type of stuff. And I get hung up a lot and I get hung up, uh, you know, from a lot of different reasons. But, you know, if you're fishing a shaky head slow along the bottom and you're fishing a real uh, jaggedy bottom, you're going to get you're going to get hung up. And sometimes I've lost as many as 15 or 20 jig heads in a day getting hung up. And every time you break that off, you know, you shorten your leader. If you use braided fluorocarbon, you shorten that leader. <clears throat> it takes a long time to retie. Sometimes you won't retie your braided fluorocarbon knot simply because it takes too much time. Your leader winds up getting shorter. Your main line starts to become more visible to the fish. And on top of that, I retie a lot for line fray. The slightest nick, I feel it with my, my, my lips. If I have the slightest little fray, I'll retie. So I'm retying all the time. And the amount of time that I would lose um, retying two different lines of braid to fluorocarbon and my main knot, it simply is not efficient for me like that. I, I, number one, it doesn't help me get any more bites by using braid to fluorocarbon. So I lose a lot of time trying to tie all those, the, an FG knot in 25 mile an hour winds <coughs> with the boat rocking around. That's one of the reasons I use the braid, the, the straight fluorocarbon. Um, so, I mean, and there's a lot of other reasons, but, but that's one of the main reasons is the fact that you lose a lot. You have to retie a lot when you're shaky head fishing. So the eight pound test Seaguar uh, and Vizex line is my go-to line on the shaky head. Now again, the setup, you know, we talked about this morning, if you saw the video um, that I did this morning on the uh, the heads, you know, I use either the Davis heads, uh, which this is right here, or the Rhino, uh, the Picasso Rhino head. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I rig this up here, you know, for the system. All the, you know, from A to B on this. Is the, first of all, you know, I use, you know, Zoom trick worm most of the time. And, you know, like I said, I rough it up, you know, get the, Salt broken up a little bit, just sort of, what did you do by this? It makes it, you know, look a little bit different. It, got, it gives it a little bit different color. Um, I'll take and I'll bite a little bit of head off. Coming in again, like an eighth of an inch on the flat side of the worm. <clears throat> down there straight like that. And again, my knot that I tie, you can see right there, that's a double uni knot, and the, you can, I don't know if you can see the tag ends there, but the double uni knot is, in my opinion, the best knot to tie with any type of light line or any type of line that you have to set the hook on, because a lot of line, if you tie like a Palomar knot and some of the other knots, a lot of times on a hook set on a light line, you'll break that line, but the double uni knot, um, Aaron Martin showed me this about 15 years ago, and I have not had any, I've never broken a single bait at the knot ever with this with this particular knot so double uni knot on the hook and then like i said i'm coming through all the way like that i'm rigging it like i keep the the hook exposed and when i'm talking about getting hung up on the shaky head i'm not talking about getting the hook hung up a lot a lot of the times when you get hung up it's because the head gets wedged in some type of a sharp rock angle so a lot of times uh you know it's not the hook that's actually hanging you up it's that but so that's my setup here, guys. This is the uh, the full setup here I got here. It's my Mega Bass Shaky Head Special Spinning Rod. Get back a little bit. Zoom Trick Worm, Davis Head Shaky Head, 8 Pound Test Seaguar and Vizex Line. Um, that's my setup there. That's my that's my go-to setup there. You know, some other times, like I said, on the Shaky Head setup, if I'm using like the uh, uh, the smaller worm, say if I'm using like a 16th or the or an eighth of an ounce on a four inch worm, a um, little bit smaller profile worm where the water is real clear, at times like that, then I'll go down to like six pound test Seaguar and Vizex and I'll go back to a little bit softer rod like the Mega Bass Whip Snake, something that's got a medium tip on it on there. So a lot of it just depends on how much power I'm trying to generate with it. But like I said, you know, staying with that six to 10 pound test line. Uh, is going to get you a lot more bites with that. But the, the biggest tips I can give you guys in shaky head fishing, if I can, you know, sort of like 
you know, give you sort of an overview. And I don't want this, we'll do another video at a later point, but sort of give you an overview of the technique is number one, um, most of the bites that you're going to get on a shaky head are once the bait hits the bottom and after you work it, say within three to four feet. I'm going to say that 80 to 90% of your bites are going to come during that time frame. So one of the things you have to determine in shaky head fishing is how long or how far you want to work that bait at, back to the boat. A lot of times it's a matter of efficiency. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll throw it out there, I'll work it four or five feet. If I don't get one, I'll throw it out there and make another cast maybe nearby. It seems like I, it seems like I can maximize the efficiency of the technique with that a little bit better. Um, head size, um, I tend to like to go lighter than what a lot of people do. If I can get away with it, I simply like to go to a sixteenth of an ounce. It's just a more of a natural fall. It seems like I land a lot more fish and I got better feel on the bait. I don't, I rarely use actually anything over the eighth of an ounce. Um, if it's got to be really windy or I'm fishing really deep, uh, if I'm fishing over an eighth of an ounce, I don't like using the three sixteenths or a quarter if, if, unless I can get away with it because at that point you might as well be using it on a bait caster rig. There's no really reason to use it on a spinning outfit during that situation. And thirdly, the tip that I'll give you, and there's a lot more, we can go into colors and all that, but the third tip I'm gonna give you is on the hook set on a shaky head. One of the big keys on the hook set on a shaky head is you need to let the fish move with it a little bit. Um, and that, I hear a lot of people saying, one of the reasons they use the yellow braid to fluorocarbon on shaky head fishing is they can detect the strike. I don't care if I detect the strike because this, I don't set the hook until I let that fish swim three or four feet with it. I can promise you right now, you will land a lot more bass on a shaky head, especially if you're using the six inch worm models and bigger, if you let that fish move with it three or four feet. I mean, that's just the, it just gives that chance for that fish to get in that, the, the bait to get in the fish's mouth a little bit deeper. Sometimes they pick these things up by the tail and by letting it get a little bit deeper, um, <clears throat> you can also <coughs> um, land a lot more fish like that. One other tip I'll give you before you set the hook, and this was taught me taught to me by, by one of the old dudes I was in a bass club with, is when you feel that bite and you feel the fish swimming out with it, shake the rod tip while the fish is moving with that bait. And by shaking that rod tip, a lot of times it makes that fish, you know, eat that bait a little bit more. And then when you set the hook in it, don't set the hook like this. When you set the hook in it, just start reeling real fast and pull back and don't let up on that. This is the big key is when you pull into that fish like that, don't ever take off from reeling hard like that until the fish starts moving the other direction. As long as that fish is coming to you and as long as that fish is not going in any type of an opposite direction, just you know put as much pressure as you possibly can on that moving in there. It makes a big difference as far as landing those fish. And then once that fish starts moving in the opposite direction, that's when you can start fighting it. And one other tip we'll get, I'll get back to, and I've covered this before, is when you're fishing a shaky head or any spinning outfit like that, stop using your drag. I don't care if you guys have a $20,000 spinning reel that's got the best drag in the world. You simply cannot become, you simply cannot fight a fish as well with a drag as you can by back reeling. You have so much more manual control and feel by back reeling a fish. I don't care if you're a pro. I'll tell this to the top spinning rod elite series guys out there. The only reason they're using the drag is they haven't spent a decade learning and perfecting the back reeling technique. If you perfect the back reeling technique, you will never use a drag again. I don't care how good your drag is. And, uh, and it's not, I'm not saying that just because out of the blue, I've used drags. I've spent hundreds of hours with drags on a spinning reel experimenting with this. And I can tell you right now, back reeling, becoming a master at back reeling, you will lose far less fish during a fight. I don't care if you're, like I said, I don't care if you're elite series pro or whatever. I'll debate that point with anybody out there that's doing that. So anyway, just a few more of my tips guys here. Um, like I said, shaky head, just a great way to catch them this time of year. It's one of the top techniques you can use and, you know, just get the system that you're comfortable with, get the bait you're comfortable, the particular brand of rod and reels you're comfortable with, and, um, you know, really allow you to maximize the technique. So 
Anyway, thanks for tuning in for the video again. Appreciate it. If you like the video, man, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, much appreciated. And we'll be back soon with another one. See you.